Dataverse can perform upserts. An upsert is a combination of an update and an insert. If the row already exists, it'll update it. And if it doesn't exist, it'll insert a new one. These can also be done in Cloudflow, as my fellow PowerCat Andre showed me a little while ago, and I wanted to show you today on PowerCat Live. So an upsert is a combination of an update or an insert, depending on what's needed, and it can simplify your cloud flows and save you some API runs. Think about it like this. You go into work on Monday morning, you really need a drink of coffee. And so if you go to your desk and you find a cup of coffee, you're gonna drink that. That's an update. And if you don't find a cup of coffee, you're gonna create a new one. That's an insert. Dataverse will do these as well. I'm gonna show you on my cloud flow how I can make it a lot simpler. So here I've got a very simple table of just coffees, types of coffees and their rating. And what I've got is a cloud flow that I'm going to show you that then will take a type of coffee. And if it exists, it'll update the rating. If it doesn't exist, it'll add a new row and save the rating. Now, I've made each of these type codes an alternate key just so I can guarantee they're unique. And in the corner is a link to Yassine's video on alternate keys, although that's not really necessary to use what I'm about to show. And so here in this flow, I'm just using a manually triggered flow just to demonstrate this. It takes a type code of coffee and a rating. And it's going to go and try to list all the coffees. And here I'm bringing back only the columns I care about. And then I'm doing a filter saying if the type code matches what was given, then return rows. I'm only limiting the row count to one because that's all I really need to know if I need to update or insert a new row. And then all the work happens in update a row. And so update a row will either insert or update depending on what we tell it to do. And so here I'm mapping my fields here, but the real work is in this expression here. Let's dive into that in a little more detail. And so the first thing in the if statement is it's checking to see if any rows were returned. If any rows had, in this case, the type of coffee that we were looking for. If it's empty, there were none, and so we're gonna insert a new row. And so we just create a new GUID, and update a rows, we'll see that's a new one, doesn't exist in the database already, and it will create a new row. And if it did exist, then we're gonna take the first ID that was returned, and then use that one, update a row, recognize that already exists, and it will update. And that way we can have one, one element or one action that will either update or insert a row. And so this way we don't need multiple conditions or anything like that to be able to determine if we need to update or insert. So let's try this out then just to test it out. So I'm gonna type a new one. We'll do a instant coffee. We'll give it a rating of a one and we'll run the flow. Now this should go and insert a new row. And so we see list rows return no values. Our logic will then create a new GUID and here back in our app, we see instant coffee. Now let's try updating one. So we're gonna choose espresso. We'll come back to our flow. We'll run it manually again, this time with espresso. And we're gonna change espresso to a rating of five. It was at one. And so here again, it's gonna run. It's going to, our list rows will indeed return something. Whoop, click down on here, okay. And so we see we got rows returned from list rows. And so it's going to use that existing GUID and then this update a row will perform an update. And if we come back to our app here, we see that Espresso is now at five from one. And so hopefully that will save you some time doing conditions or other things like that that we see that does a lot of work that you can let Dataverse do for us. Thanks for watching PowerCat Live. Now before you go, we are making new videos every week. Click this Microsoft logo to subscribe and you'll be the first to see them. And look over here for a couple of videos that can make you a power platform expert.